So now the test, how does water affect your bow string? So let me go ahead and set up the test we're gonna do here. First off, I've got my, my Nitrum 34, excuse me, from last year. This is what I hunted with all year. Uh, this specific set of string and cables were on the bow for about three and a half months before hunting season. And then I hunted from August, uh, all of September, and then into mid-November for uh, Whitetail, Nebraska. This string's got some, a little bit of show signs of wear and tear on there with some fraying and uh, but normal use like i said I, I put a lot of arrows through this bow but out in the field quite a few days i would guess it, it was probably in the field for somewhere around uh, about 30 days over the three plus months there and i've also got my brand new defiant 30 of which uh custom paint job here from melon melon head customs if you're interested check them out darren does a great job so what am i going to do this string has maybe a thousand shots on it I've had this bow set up this way for, oh, I don't know, maybe three weeks to a month. And I'm gonna take this bow and this bow and I'm gonna set them outside. Again, it's gonna be a rainy weekend here in Denver. So I'm gonna set both these bows outside and see how much water they absorb. Uh, the kicker to this test is I'm gonna have them both sighted in. I'm just gonna do this test at uh, maybe 30 yards as well. Um, just so that way you can see how the impact point changes. I may end up doing some at 50, 30 and 50, just to kind of give a comparison also with the arrow testing we did on the other video. But that way you can see how much water gets absorbed in a, in a string that's been on your bow for maybe, you know, six months, a year, two years, as opposed to a brand new set of stringing cables that's clean, that's, uh, that's, that's well taken care of, you know, waxed from the factory. You may ask what kind of peckerhead leaves his brand new bows outside, right? This guy, because I'm gonna help you figure out how does water actually affect your setup. Okay, so first we've got the Nitrum. Uh, this is with the used set of stringing cables on there. It's been raining for about 24 hours, still drizzling a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and get back out to 50. At this test, I shot at the same bag target and I had all three arrows in 50 inside the red heart. So we'll see where it hits now now that the string's been uh, soaking up a little bit of water here for the last day or so. So let's see where we hit. Okay, now we got the Defiant 30. I'm gonna shoot this in a few arrows, same distance, same arrows. It was zero to 50 before, so let's see where this one's hitting. That last bow is hitting about six inches right to uh, the group is about three to five inches low right. So let's see where the Defiant's hitting. So results are pretty clear. The newer string uh, did not absorb the water like the older string did. And you know, it goes back to how long should you have a string and cables on your bow, you know, waxing the string, what is the purpose of waxing? And, and really what it is is just to uh, reduce friction on those fibers. So once you wax those exposed str strings and you, you do that uh, regularly, then you're going to extend the life of that string. It's most of the material that you wax the string with is waterproof. And like I said, when, when, when that shot goes off, it's a violent action that that string with the oscillation and those fibers that are kind of grinding next to each other, when you have a properly waxed string, it just reduces the friction on those fibers. So the newer string, obviously, both strings were fused strings that I didn't have a, you know, a higher end 
custom string on one bow or the other. Both fuse strings on a custom bow, on a stock bow, excuse me. And, and, and this, the string that's newer, that has obviously less wear to it, uh, the arrows were right in, in the spot. Um, and the string that has more fraying, and I purposely didn't wax this before I did it because, again, what happens, these fibers have started to create friction against each other. They started to fray, whether it's, you know, something rubbing on it, whether it's just uh, constant use. So end result here is pretty simple. You don't have to change your strings out every three months or every couple months. It's, it can be an expensive endeavor. Just as you have a new set of string and cables on, get yourself used to waxing that string every two, three, four times you shoot the bow and make sure that wax works its way into all the fibers. It's going to help prolong the life of the string. Some of you guys that have, have had strings on a bow for two, three, four, five years, you know, the longer you have a set of string and cables on a bow, the more breakdown internally is going to happen and you can't see a lot of that breakdown. So change your strings regularly, keep them clean, keep them waxed, and you will have better results out in the field. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for part two, which is basically the arrow portion of, uh, of this video.